How do I replicate the functionality of an associative array using a dictionary inside of C-sharp? First, let me talk us, uh, for a second about associative arrays. Um, some other languages use them natively. The idea of an associative array is an array or list in which one can reference information using a key that is something other than an ordinal number, meaning the key could be a, a non-ordinal data type, uh, very commonly a string. That would mean you would have a scenario where you can look up information by an actual string name instead of having to use a number. So it can be convenient and actually makes code more readable in some cases. To give a demonstration of this, let's start a temporary application as a console application. And let's define a dictionary variable inside of the main method. So what I'm going to do is make a new dictionary where both the type or both the key and value are of type string. And we'll go ahead and call this, or we'll give this variable some name like a record, and initialize it to a new instance of dictionary. Make sure that is instantiated. And now we can turn around and start using it. Really, the declaration is as simple as that. To start using this, uh, first let's put some information into our new record variable. So we could take record and now add to it. So we'll add an entry. And for the key, we'll add something like the string name ID and then we'll add another string for the actual data, so a value of one. And we'll add a few of these, uh, L, what I'll call fields, to this uh, record. So we could add another entry. This time I'll call the entry name, and we'll resolve that to the data 3D buzz. And then one final thing we could add, just so we have a little bit of data to work with, is we could add in a maybe field type of content and resolve that to videos. Now the cool thing about setting up an associative array using a dictionary in this manner is we can now treat the information almost as though it were a database record. This actually kind of mimics a database in which you pull records out and each of those records or the record is made up of many named fields because now we can access all of our data elements by name instead of by index. To give an example of this um, what I'm going to do is actually read in input from the console, so that way we can type in what field we would like to get and have that data shown. So I'll do a simple console write line, just telling the user that we would like some input. We'll write out something like um, enter field. And then we'll turn around and read that data into a variable. I'm actually going to make a string variable called field. And then that will be the result uh, loaded by console dot read line. Once we have that information, we'll look up that field and then show it on the screen. So I'll, now we'll do another console write line, and we'll write out whatever was retrieved. So we'll say that value was, and then we'll format this for element zero. So we'll give that data as whatever was in record by the given field. So there, that's where we're actually referencing the data using our string type instead of an ordinal number. And after we write that to the screen, I'll do another console read line to hold up execution and we can see what was shown. So if all of this works, we should be able to run the program. And let's begin with ID. So if we enter the field ID, that resolves to 1. If we run the program again and enter the field name, that resolves to 3D buzz. So in this manner, we can very easily reference whatever we'd like. Um, it should be noted, however, that um, some additional checking should be done for safety purposes, because if we give a field that doesn't exist, like cat, it will actually throw an exception saying that the given key was not present. But that is not unlike using any other array where you give an index that is out of range. So with that, that's going to wrap up this video tip.